Hi everybody, I'm Scott, and if you know anything about this channel at all, you know that I like power strips. And so I've got two of them. They're by the same company, Ed, Tam. I saw them on Amazon, especially this big one, which has 16 receptacles on it. Um, I particularly like that. In theory, in practice, I want to see how good this is. It's a plasticky power strip with USB ports. And although USB ports aren't inherently bad, are they bad? That's what we want to find out. Is the USB shitty and is the entire power strip shitty? So that's what we're going to dive into today. Very plain brown packaging. So not much in the way of an unboxing, which I don't know. Maybe no one likes that anyway. So I'll just whip it out of the package. And there it is. It's got sort of eight receptacles on top as a normal power strip might, but then an additional four outlets on either side, giving it a total of 16. And in a rather compact form factor relative to, uh, well, hand for scale. I mean, you don't know how big my hands are, but multimeter for scale. It's just slightly larger than chunky multimeter. So that's cool. And I'm using Christmas colors here in honor of the season, I guess. Not really. The, the fluke's not in the spirit. And just for the sake of argument, I got its little brother, which is in very similar packaging. But this one's party piece is it has a braided cord. Ooh, exciting. It's actually otherwise has the same plug on it. So there's really no advantage to the braided cord. It feels a bit more flexible. The, uh, the only weird thing is this is a flat cable. Like this has the three conductors next to each other. You can see it's much thinner this way than this way. Whereas this one is your standard round flex cable. And the little guy actually came with screws for mounting. And you can see it's got mounting holes there and there and there and there, which makes for convenient mounting. One thing I will say right off the bat is this is very light, like frighteningly light. Um, there's not much to it at all. It does use triangle drive screws, which I do have drivers for. They're kind of deeply inset though. So I'm not actually sure if I have thin and longish triangle drive bits. I know I have like the, the kind of go into a standard quarter inch uh, socket style driver, but yeah, let's see what we got. Oh no, actually, before opening it, I want to test the USB ports. So let's test the uh, USB ports on the big guy first. And just pardon me as I plug this in off camera. Uh, oh, it says surge protected. It, it, it glows extremely dimly. Like you can barely see it on camera. I can barely see it with the naked eye in this bright room, but if I bring it up to my eye like this, I can see that it is indeed illuminated in green. So I guess I guess that's good. I wonder what kind of uh, actual surge protection it has in here. We'll find out. So in case you're wondering why I had the multimeter and the oscilloscope ready to go, it's because I also have a little USB plug with the end chopped off so that I can meter this thing. And I'm going to hook up the multimeter simultaneously. Now, of course, this oscilloscope can measure voltage, but I'm going to have this set to AC coupling so we can see what the noise is coming out of here. And this will measure the actual DC voltage. And I'm going to put it under load to see how it performs under load. So we can see a voltage drop. We can see if there's more noise at the same time. And just to help ameliorate the glare, I'm going to put these scissors underneath it, which may or may not be enough. Yeah, I really got to do something about the lighting down here to make it a little less glary at times like this. And this is barely visible. This is not bright at all. Well, my apologies for the dim display on the scope, but uh, that's kind of the best I can do right now. Okay, kind of not ideal. I pushed the gain all the way up. You can see how my hands are uh, swamping out the camera, but you can see the oscilloscope screen much more readily now, which is obviously what we're after here. All right, so you can see under no load, we're getting about a peak to peak of 27.6 millivolts with a high of 17.2 and a low of negative 10.4. And that's just based on the cursor, so that's approximate, but that's pretty, uh, pretty close to where we're at. And it's putting out a nice solid 5.057 volts, which is not a problem at all. Okay, now one more item I'm going to bring to this party is this load tester. It has USB inputs, which makes it very convenient for putting load on, well... USB ports. So we're going to plug one end in there, the other in there, and now this is registering 5 volts exactly. And let's try putting uh, 
one amp on it. All right, so I'm gonna gradually ramp up the load tester right now. And we'll sort of see where it hits. It's a little delicate to set, but that's 130 milliamps. And already you can see the noise is sort of going crazy. And the voltage actually came up a little bit, which is a good thing. I mean, it's compensating for the voltage drop. 260 milliamps, noise is even worse. Five hundred milliamps, and uh, yeah, let's see where we're at. Noise is becoming more frequent, so I guess the uh, switch mode power supply is stepping it up a little bit. Okay, let's bring it up to a full amp. Okay, that is one amp there, and it's sort of going out of range vertically now. All right, now we've got sixty-nine millivolts peak to peak, more or less. And what about 1.5 amps? Okay, that's 1.5 amps on the button, and the noise has, of course, become worse as far as the amplitude, but the frequency looks about the same as before, although it's kind of all over the place. And I'm going to bring it up to 2 amps. I don't actually know what the rating on the, these USB ports are, but we'll find out. So at 2 amps, we're still getting a solid 5.182 volts. That's great. The noise is uh, steadily getting worse as we add more power to it. So now we're at about 100 millivolts peak to peak, which is starting to get into like a territory It's a little silly. Can we take it up to 2.5 amps? Yeah, all right, 2.5 amps. We're holding steady voltage-wise. Noise is getting a little bit worse, not too much worse, Ooh, although it's kind of like all over the place as far as the frequency keeps changing around. That's interesting, even though the load should be remaining perfectly constant. Okay, we're at 3 amps. I'm actually surprised this is holding out at 3 amps. I mean, the noise is getting a little crazy. Oh, okay, so we're about 125-ish millivolts peak to peak. Do we dare go to 3.5 amps? I mean, I'm, nope, cut out. As soon as I tried to go slightly over 3 amps, it just cut out. So it's capable of 3 amps, which is, I think, more than adequate. Um, I don't know. It's probably 3 amps, I'm guessing, across all four ports. But still, that's that's quite fine for a device like this. I expected less of it, actually, so... Pleasantly surprised. And I guess just for thoroughness, we should test the little guy. Like I said, the little guy feels really light, so I can't imagine there's too much in there. Okay, little guy's plugged in and turned on. Again, it's got this surge protected light, which is on, but extraordinarily dim. Same deal as the other one, which is to be expected. It is the same manufacturer after all. Okay, our whole contraption is plugged in. And it's triggering there. Okay, uh, let me just change the range. Uh, Okay, I had to bring it back to 500 microseconds per horizontal division and 20 millivolts per vertical division. And let's see where we're at. I'm imagining it's the same circuitry, so now we're at about 58 millivolts peak to peak, which I think is right about where the other one was under no load. And the other one, uh, I think, was a little lower in voltage, but 5.1 volts, perfectly acceptable. That's what one would want to see. On this one, I'm just going to go straight up to an amp. Okay, at one amp, of course, the noise became more frequent and higher amplitude. So I'm just going to change the range a little bit. Not that much. And let's change the time range. Okay, so there we go. Like 20 microseconds per division. And about 130 millivolts peak to peak. I think that's worse than the other one. And this is on uh, one amp. Let's bring it up to two amps. Okay, at 2 amps, still seeing a very strong 5.2-ish volts. And roughly 200 millivolts peak to peak. Definitely worse than the other one. Although the noise hasn't become much more frequent, so that's cool, I guess. Now I'm bringing it up to 3 amps. Okay, there we go, 3 amps. The noise is becoming a little wackier, but not necessarily more frequent. Um, and amplitude-wise, it's not too much worse than it was at 2 amps, surprisingly. But now we're at nearly a quarter of a volt peak to peak, which is pretty bad. And how far above 3 amps, if any, can we go? 3.18? 3.3? Okay, this one's actually uh, doing a little better than the other one as far as how high it can go. Still putting out a steady 5.1 volts. Okay, 3.4 amps, it just crapped out. So, yeah. I would, I would say the little guy is good for 3.4 amps, roughly, give or take. 
And that would probably be again across all three ports in this case. Because this guy's only got the three. Glad we had a chance to take a look at that. I'm going to put all of this stuff to the side and then we'll proceed on opening up the power strips after I disconnect the power to them. How wise. Yeah, why is this like stuck on here? A quick interlude in case you're curious. Here is the 16 receptacle power strip from uh, Amazon, of course, as everything is that I buy. And it's $26.99 with an option to save 12% with this coupon, which is just, I don't understand why they do coupons like this. It's just weird. Like you just check a box and then you get a coupon. Great. So let's see if it makes any promises that we can refute. So it says it's rated for 5 volts, 2.4 amps. So it's actually done better than that. Although perhaps at 3 or 3.4 amps, it will overheat. So I suppose keeping it at the rated uh, 2.4 amps would be best. So it says over current protection, over voltage protection, 1382 degrees Fahrenheit fire resistance. Um, hmm. I can't really test that, so let's have to say we agree. And short circuit protection, which is over current protection. A short circuit's just a hell of a lot of current really fast. Right angle flat plug, great, no one cares. I like how they show it in comparison to like this obnoxious plug, as opposed to just a plug that goes straight into the wall. Like, that's not really, it's usually a different comparison than this, but whatever. Good for them. And uh, wall mountable design. And I definitely can't refute that. It does have mounting holes. Ah, this screwdriver set does have a triangle drive. Oh, yeah, I got to tone that hammer down. But is it the right size triangle? It, well, yeah, it does appears to be the right size triangle. Brilliant. Well, it's a chewy into plastic type screws, but I expected no less. If the bottom of this is dirty, that's just crap from my table. All sorts of projects have taken place on here recently, and, uh, it's just schmutz. I like how they bother to use triangle drive. I mean, I guess most people don't have a triangle drive bit, but it's not like you can't get one. So I don't know. I always found security bits to be a bit silly. Ah, no pun intended when it comes to uh, equipment in the home. Cause it's like, if you're going to take it apart, you're going to take it apart. That is not, the construction I expected. I expected solid copper bus bars through here, but um, I guess that'd be tricky to do with the outlets on the side. But yeah, so each outlet is a module, which has, I guess, the side one and the top one. And they're all wired with actual little pieces of wire. Not the thickest wire in the world. It definitely does not look like 14 gauge wire. Uh, in fact, it's 16 gauge wire. Ah, it's 16 gauge wire. Okay, this automatically gets a fail for me. I mean, yes, they're very short lengths of wire. Um, whatever your heaviest load is, though, I'd plug into this receptacle here rather than the one all the way at the end of the chain because they just go, they just loop around at the bottom. And there's two little takeoff wires here for the USB. Uh, power supply and so the live of course is the black one it comes around here and then up here same with the neutral comes down and around but for some reason the grounding wire comes in from this side and then goes up there just fine there's nothing wrong with that that's just an observation oh it did say it does say surge protected doesn't it yeah let's see what kind of surge protection it has more triangle drive screws are they the same nope they're not the same as the case screws they're a lot shorter but that's easy to remember. Can I look at this board without desoldering crap? Yes, ah. Looks like a couple of maybe metal oxide varistors and a thermal fuse in the middle. It looks like a resistor and a diode for the LED. And these two neutrals are just, oh, they're actually soldered together on the back. So the neutral is just wired straight through. There's no protection on the neutral at all. The protection is only on the live. Okay, so not what I would call robust surge protection, but I guess uh, you can't accuse them of lying. It is. It does have something. And this does appear to be a breaker. It says, it says reset printed on it anyway. 
Okay, but what is this little breaker module rated at? I would actually prefer it not be rated at 15 amps because this has relatively thin gauge wiring in it. Let's see if it's printed on there. Okay, well, I'm not sure that it matters, but right away it is wired backwards. This is going to be impossible for you to see on camera, but this position here is labeled load, the one all the way on this end, and that is in fact where the line comes in, so that's right away wrong. I mean, how hard would it have been just to reverse the switch, right? And it's rated 15 amps, 125 volt, 50, 60 hertz, 250 volt, 50, 60 hertz. So it is a 15 amp breaker, as I would kind of expect. What about the cord? The cord claims to be 14 gauge, which is more than suitable for 15 amps. In fact, that's what you would expect. So I'm fine with that. And um, just looking at the conductor size, it, it does look like it probably is 14 gauge. And 14 gauge coming in, but then, like I said, 16 gauge all the way around. And let's just take a look at the wee little USB module. I'm not going to do an in-depth dive into the... Uh, circuit layout but we can at least take a look at what's on there okay yeah it's a very much a switch modey power supply looking and it actually doesn't look too bad i mean there's a lot of separation between the primary and secondary so that's that's at least good i mean who knows what this transformer is like yeah it doesn't look badly made i mean this isn't my area of expertise but i've seen way worse looking usb power supplies with way fewer components so, and component count isn't really a measure of quality, but it is a measure of how much money they're willing to spend on their USB power supply. So this has a decent component count. Um, it has three electrolytics on the front and a big inductor, what is probably a fuse, thermal or otherwise. T2 amp, it's a two amp fuse, uh, pro hopefully resettable. Otherwise, once that blows, you're out of luck. It does have overcurrent protection because it did just shut off when I drew more than three point whatever amps and then it came back on. The USB power supply is, is actually a pleasant surprise. I did not expect this level of quality. Um, it was noisy. And in fact, the one in the little guy was even noisier still. So I'm wondering if that's a different design. We'll look at them side by side in a moment. Uh, let me put the screws away with each power strip that they belong to. Um, oh, one thing I'm actually curious about is the mounting holes on the back, how do they line up with these bus bars inside the unit? I just want to put this more or less back in place so I can get the back lined up uh, this way. So, yeah, if it does... See, here's the thing. It has little protective pieces of plastic so that when you have a screw going in here, if the screw is, let's say, too proud of the wall, it's not going to punch right through the back. But if you push this onto the wall too firmly, you can see that this back piece is only held on by four tiny little pieces of plastic. So it is possible when you go to shove this on the wall, if the screw is too proud, it could easily break through that plastic. And then um, it could hit the USB power supply circuit board, which it would probably hit the primary side. So that's not very good because that's about where it lines up with. And up here, it's not really lined up with the live connection. It's sort of like in the middle here. So if you did drive a screw through, it should just go into the free space here. But it is, it is just right next to the live conductor. So just uh, if, if this piece breaks off, um, don't go jiggling it onto the wall too much. At least not with the power on. Make sure you uh, power this thing off first. Not a huge issue, but uh, always something to look for in power strips when you're opening them up if you happen to. And now for the little guy, who also has triangle screws on the back. Honestly, why was I driving myself crazy? Yeah, that's much better. Much nicer on the wrists. Okay. Now this... This is the construction I was more looking for. These cheap-ass bus bars that are made of very thin, flexible, flimsy metal... This is really what I expected here. And this uh, <laughs> just casual grounding jumper here. And a uh, circuit board which has everything sort of soldered to it. So it's going to be kind of hard to remove because the switch pushes in from the front. 
and this board of course would need to be pulled up and off of there so um yeah i don't think this board is coming loose but i can see it has the two probable metal oxide resistors in there it has an led to indicate the surge protection is on so it undoubtedly has another resistor and diode and not much else so that is about it on this guy and obviously it does have a very different usb power supply I mean, I guess the circuitry could be the same, but the layout and the size is certainly very different. Now, this is just excessive. But why do it manually when you can do it automatically? Huh, okay. It actually uh, almost looks like these came out of the same factory. These are very, I mean, obviously the shape is completely different, and one has four US, USB ports. But the components look pretty much the same. They're just in different locations. We even have a, this green electrolytic there, green electrolytic there. These two look about the same size. And are they the same rating? This one's 50 microfarad. This one's also 15 microfarad. Different manufacturers of the capacitors, though, I think. Yep. This one's rated 10 microfarad on the smaller one. Can't see it on the other power supply, but it's probably the same. Yeah, everything looks to be... Have the same ratings and be the same components basically so yeah and in fact the chips on the back look surprisingly or unsurprisingly at this point similar and there is a model number on the back of this one and a model number on this one so this is rev 4.0 of whatever board this is and this is revision one of this board and the model numbers look completely different this one's lqth pcb 1140 and this one just says PCB1218. So I guess PCB1140, PCB1218. It could be probably from the same manufacturer, actually. I mean, it's got to be, right? They look just that similar. Although the little one was a bit noisier, um, but did provide a little more current than the big one. But I do not like this little power strip. I don't like these really thin, flimsy-feeling bus bars. In fact, this, I could take out the grounding bus bar. And like, oh yeah, these def these deform incredibly easily. Th these aren't very springy. So like, after inserting and removing a plug enough times, like that can get a little pushed out of the way, as can that one. And you could easily lose your ground or your neutral or your live if it happens over there. So this this is not high quality metal. Yeah, this is, this is what I would call a very cheapo power strip with a decent USB power supply, which is actually the opposite of what I expected. I expected a decent quality power strip with a really shit USB power supply. So they've uh, subverted my expectations on this one. And they've more or less exceeded my expectations on this one. It's very neat. It looks like a very nicely done job in here, although you can see where it's manually soldered. They did... Um, burn the plastic a little bit here and there but yeah yeah who can blame them i mean manual soldering what do you want but overall it looks like a reasonable quality assembly and again good quality usb power supply um and these receptacle modules are just that they're modules right away though one thing i don't like is you see the grounding connect conductor right there that look it, it's it's in a different position in each of these and that just means these are manufactured to very loose tolerances. Because they should, you know, if, if they were manufactured to very exacting tolerances, that metal in there would be in the exact same position in each of those holes. But it's not. And these modules should be identical. I know that seems very nitpicky. But uh, I'm not just nitpicking for the sake of no reason. I'm just nit I'm nitpicking because... Uh, you don't want electrical devices that are manufactured to very loose tolerances. So, yeah, I'm overall not impressed. This is also very thin, flimsy plastic. Like, very flimsy. So, there are far better plastic power strips out there. In general, my philosophy is metal power strips. Like, metal all the way around. Some of them have plastic bottoms. I made a bullshit products show or review or whatever you want to call it about that one time. Um, but full metal cases... Preferably like a decent thickness of steel, like actual heavy steel. 
um, you know, where you can tell from the weight that it's well put together. And I generally like to keep my USB power supply separate from my power strips. That's not just for the sake of any kind of safety reasons, but that's just for convenience also. Like, you know, I tend to move USB power supplies around a lot, and I don't necessarily use them where the power strip is. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I mean, by all means, use it. Oh, that's interesting. I just noticed something. And I'm sorry for being a little uh, all over the place here, but it does say USB total 3.1 amps here, whereas I'm reasonably sure it said, yeah, 2.4 amp over here. Can't really blame him for that. I mean, you know, marketing says 2.4 amps, and then you find out the unit is actually capable of 3.1 amps, which it seems to be. I mean, hey, you know, that's just a bonus. What about the other little guy? Little guy also says rated for 3.1 amps. So, which seems to be accurate. In fact, this guy went up to like 3.4 amps. So, yeah, short video, quick look at these. Well, relatively short for me. Uh, quick look at these power strips. Um, the little guy, I would avoid. Not a fan. The big guy actually seems okay. Um, I'm a little dubious of these modules, and I'd feel much better if this had like a 10 amp breaker on it or something because of the thinner wiring inside. Like if, if it was a metal power strip, I wouldn't mind so much the 16 gauge wiring on the inside because chances are it's such a short run, it might heat up a little bit, but it probably won't overheat. It probably won't burn. But just in case i'd prefer that was inside a metal enclosure so just in case it did melt down a little um the whole thing doesn't melt down so overall i, I can't say i would recommend either of these because they're cheap they're too cheap for what they are i mean like this one's 27 bucks but 16 outlets usb power supply like a decent quality usb power supply should be like you know 15 17 18 bucks on its own for four ports and in fact, you know, you could get like decent quality ones from Anchor or uh, other companies I can't think of right now. And a decent quality power strip. Like, well, power strips are incredibly cheap. Don't buy the incredibly cheap ones. That, that's all. Just to give you an example, I got these recently for myself, not to take apart on YouTube, although I might take them apart just for fun. But um, these are both solid metal enclosures. This one's a little on the light side, but these Belkins, I have a couple of these already, and these are uh, actually pretty solidly made. These I have opened up and checked out, and these pass muster with me. Expensive, yes, but 10 outlets, 15 uh, foot power cord, everything's properly rated, everything's heavy duty. If you're going to plug a lot of stuff into it, especially with relatively high dr current draw overall, like stay away from one of these, like never plug a space heater into a plastic power strip. I mean, you should never plug into a space heater into a power strip full stop, but we all know some of you are going to. And so just, you know, if you can spend the extra money, get a metal power strip, get one from a reputable manufacturer, get one that's heavy duty. And um, if you're gonna load it up heavily, just, uh, you know, go with something decent quality. That, that's all I'm saying. And just because the things you're gonna plug into this, for example, aren't gonna be high current draw, like let's say a television, an Xbox and a Blu-ray player or something like none of those are high current draw things nowadays. I mean, televisions used to be, especially with big CRTs, but nowadays LCD screens, I mean, they draw very little power, but a fault could develop in any one of those appliances and draw a sudden high amount of current. And, you know, do you really want to trust your whole house burning down to something like this? I don't, and I wouldn't, and I have a, and that's also because I got to play a numbers game. I have a lot of equipment down here and a lot of power strips and PDUs and other sorts of, uh, well, power distribution equipment. And so I tend to buy the higher end stuff just because with so many of them, one of them's bound to fail eventually. Like I said, it's just a numbers game. And so rather than having like, I don't know, 50 of these in my house, maybe an overstatement, but I'd rather have, you know, 50 of these or 50 of these or their equivalent and a lot of times what i do use are actually for like the power distribution for the servers servers and stuff is enterprise grade like used stuff that i got off ebay and i inspected and it's all fine and so i use that um and that stuff is usually very expensive and very reliable and should be fairly safe so yeah um again I don't recommend either of these. I kind of like this one. At least it has like the party piece of having so many receptacles on it and the side receptacles as well. 16 outlets, 
sounds great. It's very convenient in one sense, but in the other sense, that just means you can really just, as compared to like a usual power strip, which might have seven or eight or even 10 outlets, this just allows you to plug in more stuff and add more current draw onto this unit. And uh, I don't know that I'd be a fan of that. So more receptacles seems great. It seems convenient, but uh, maybe get two of these with fewer receptacles and plug them into two different outlets in your house. Again, I don't know what your use case is, but just keep in mind, like current draw can add up pretty quickly, especially when you're talking 16 things drawing current. I mean, if each one is one amp, then there you go. You're already over this thing's rated capacity of 15 amps. But I do go on. Anyway, thanks for watching. I've been Scott. These have been two power strips from Ad Adtam. Adtam, I think. Does it say it on it? Yeah, Adtam. A-D-D-T-A-M. Uh, like and subscribe and whoop de doo all the other YouTube stuff. Thanks. Later. Later? Who the fuck signs off a YouTube video with later? What is this, 1992? Did they say later in 1992 or is that more like a late 90s thing? Clueless. Whatever major... No, that's whatever major loser. Not see a later late... Oh, fuck. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'll leave this in, though. Because, you know, fuck me.